Alright, so welcome back. Now this is going to be part 2 of my Unity 3D C-Sharp tutorial on Crim's Maze. That is, using Crim's algorithm to create a maze. Now, <clears throat> so, um, since last time I haven't done much, I've only added a directional light, and this directional light is just going to make it where we can see the cells. So, as you can see here, the cells all are starting to use gray. Um, I'm going to have to turn that black. So I'll just go in the material, the prefab, and set it to black. And there. Okay, that's good. Now it was black before, that's because there wasn't any light. Now we have light, and so we have to set the color. Um, okay. So we have this 5x5. Five now, if you notice, all these cells, um, first, there's some problems. We don't know which cell is which, because they're all named the same. They're kind of taking up space. I would like to have them all be uh, children to the grid object, so it would nicely fit in like this, but we don't have that yet. So, first, we're going to work with these points. Let's go back to our script that we have here. And to actually work with those new cells that we made, we're going to have to declare a variable. So it's going to be transform because that's what we're using. And we'll call it new cell. Okay. So I declared a new variable. It's local. So every time this for loop goes by, this will be destroyed and remade. Um, so we have transform new cell. And I'm going to type in new cell equals instantiate blah blah blah. So the object that comes out of this is going to be assigned to new cell. Or rather, new sign will, or new cell will be assigned to the new cell that comes out of this function that we do. Now if I try and run this right now, you'll see we're going to get an error. It's saying cannot implicitly convert unity object to unity transform. Um, so what this is saying is this function returns a object. Now um, we want it to be of type transform. So to change the object into the transform, I'm going to do a explicit conversion. It's pretty simple. All we have to do is type transform in parentheses before the instantiate function and that will convert this object that we get out of here into a transform type that we can put into new cell. So now new cell equals this object that we just made. So we can modify it. For instance we'll say new cell dot name equals or actually here. This is an easier one first. New cell dot parent equals transform. Transform is the grid object that we have right here. So we're going to parent everything, every new cell, to this object instead of having it out here. <clears throat> First, let me show you one more time what it looks like without parent. So I'll comment that out. Go ahead and run this. And you can see once again all of these new cells that we made are outside of the. the uh, or they're on the top level of the hierarchy, and we don't like that. So with this new cell dot parent equals transform, if I run this again, all of these cells will be children of the grid script. So that's nice. Um, something else we should do is rename these. We don't want them to all be cell clone. Um, so there's some different ways we can do this. I'm going to use string dot format. And here's the MSDN web page for it. Um, this is well, there's a number of ways you can do this, um, but this is probably the most professional. Anyway, so a string format, and I'm gonna make my um, new cells names be formatted in a certain way. So it'll be something like this. Um, See, and I'll see what this is doing in a second. But let's go ahead and run it first. 
right. So we're going to have them notated like this. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, all the way down. So, let's see, like, 202 is going to be this object right here in the middle. This one is 004, this is 404, that's 000, etc. Now, there's another way to do this. Um, let's make it a little less complicated. We sell dot name equals open parentheses plus x plus common, actually it's 0, common 0, plus z plus end parentheses. And this will give us the same thing if I comment out the thing I had earlier. This will give us the same thing, um, but this is just slightly less professional. So I'm going to be using the string format. Nothing. Okay, so now we're going to start assigning random numbers to each of the grid, or each cell in the grid. So, um, to do that, we're going to make a new function. Um, set random numbers. And I'm going to call that function at start after create grid. <coughs> now, this is going to be a for each loop. So it's for each transform child in transform. Now this is kind of weird, but it means for each child of type transform in transform, and this last transform is the grid object, see how it's lower based. So for every child in this grid object right here, so basically all of these we're going to do something. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting a random number. To do that, we have random.range and I'll put it between 0 and 100. Okay, so um, it's going to be a integer. We'll say um, number. Or weight would be the actual terminology for prints. So weight equals random.range. So for each child we're gonna generate a new weight. So do child dot uh, get component. Actually get component in children. And it's going to be um C G Y dot text equals weight. Okay, and actually I'll make this thing. So what this means is for each child in the grid, we're going to generate a new random number between 0 and 10. And now the child that we have right here, now we're going to look in the child for the, the component GUI text, which is going to be right here, or text mesh. Let's see, text mesh. And we're going to have that text be that random number. And actually, this is an integer right now. It needs to be a string. So we'll have two strings. Let's see if that fixes this error. Yeah, okay. So we press play. We get our grid, all random numbers inside of it. And neatly formatted in this way. Alright, so. I hope that made sense, and part three will be coming soon. Thank you for watching.